Okay, so in the previous video, we started analyzing the DC motor with non-zero initial conditions, and we got to the point where omega s is given by this big, potentially ugly expression. It turns out it's not that bad. We want to demonstrate that. So I'll do that by first cleaning off a bit of space. And then we'll look at this at this equation. So you'll notice this thing here is a constant times, it's basically a constant, there's no s's in it, times 1 over r plus sl. So here I have an s, and here I have an s. What I need to do in order to divide this 45.45 radians per second by this expression down here is convert this into the ratio of two polynomials. And the way I can do that is multiply this s term, this guy here, by r plus sl divided by r plus sl. Okay, so I'm just multiplying this one s term by this. And when I do that, uh, here we'll clean up a little bit more of this. I'm going to get, um, well actually let's just put this up at the top for a minute. I'm going to get R times S, that's this guy times S, plus L times S squared, that's this guy times this S, plus this constant over here, k t k b over i l, and that's all going to be over r plus s l. Okay. So again, what I've done is I've taken this s and essentially put it over the same denominator that I have here. So now I have a polynomial. I have that this whole expression here is given by this, and it's a ratio of polynomials. So to divide 45.45 uh, radians per second by this polynomial, or by this ratio of polynomials up here, I just flip it so that the bottom becomes the top and the top becomes the bottom and multiply it. And when I do that then, I get that omega of s is equal to 45.45 times r plus s times l over l times s squared plus r times s plus kt kb over il. Okay. So there you have it. I have now a ratio of two polynomials as my expression for omega s. And what I can do now is find the inverse Laplace transform of this omega s, and I can find that inverse Laplace transform using partial fraction expansions. If this is the first you've heard or seen of partial fraction expansions, you'll actually want to pause this video at this point and uh, look at the series of videos that will be done fairly soon about how to uh, invert Laplace transforms by taking partial fractions, ex partial fraction expansions. Um, for this, I'm just going to go fairly quickly through this to uh, and use MATLAB as a calculator uh, to find the partial fraction expansion. Okay, uh, the uh, values that I have for the constants here, uh, just as a reminder, um, kt is, uh, if I remember correctly, 0 0.05, actually, okay, I apologize for what probably looked like a fairly weird uh, glitch. I needed to check the values of these constants, 
and it turns out that of course I had it wrong. So uh, KT we'll erase that guy is 0 0.02 uh, Newton meters uh, per amps. And I'm actually not going to put units in here because MATLAB doesn't know what to do with the units and I want to get this done quickly without spending a lot of time. KB R is 1 ohm, L is 0.2 Henry's, IL is 0 0.005. Although I have to say writing these things down without actually writing down their units is almost killing me. It's not an easy thing to do. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do is we'll bring up MATLAB. And again, we're going to use MATLAB as a, uh, um, as a calculator to uh, compute these uh, things. Uh, so in order to be able to do that, I'm going to uh, slide that out of the way. So now it's a visible to me. Okay, so we have KT is equal to 0 0.02. We have KB is equal to 0 0.22. R is equal to 1. Um, L is equal to 0 0.2. And IL is equal to 0 0.005. Okay. So now, uh, to compute this, we need to take 45.45 and multiply it by R and L, and that will give us the terms in the numerator. The terms in the denominator are going to be um, just L for the S squared, R for S, and then the, this constant. So I'll go ahead and use MATLAB to compute these guys. Slide that out of the way again. And we get the following. B1, which is going to be uh, the coefficient in the uh, numerator for our S term, is going to be 45.45 times L. B2 is going to be, I'm sorry, B0, which is the, co the constant coefficient in the numerator is going to be 45.45 times R. In the denominator, A2 is equal to L, A1 is equal to R, and A0 is equal to KT times KB divided by IL. Okay, so now we're going to make a vector in order to actually do the uh, partial fraction expansion. B is B1, B0. A is A2, A1, A0. And now we can do the partial fraction expansion, uh, which will look like this. R comma P comma comma K, whoops, K, is equal to residue B comma A. And it thinks for a little bit, and now we have our partial fraction expansion. Uh, with that partial fraction expansion, we have the values um, where R1 and, or, yeah, R1 and 2 are given by minus 19 and 64.49. Uh, the two poles, the P, is given by minus 3.86 and minus 1.13. So uh, we can now, as soon as I, again, I'll pause this so you don't have to watch me desperately try to write this down. Okay, so we've got our partial fraction expansion here. And uh, that partial fraction expansion, here we'll tidy up a bit, with the values for the constants that we're using, looks like this. It's equal to 
minus 19.044 over s plus 3.8601 plus 64.5 four nine four four over S plus one point one four nine or I'm sorry that should be one three nine nine. Okay. So this is what omega S is. Now we can take the Laplace transform of this, or the inverse Laplace transform of this, to get that omega t is given by minus 19.044, that's this value here, e to the minus 3.8601 plus 64.4944 times e to the minus 1.1399t, and I dropped a t here. Okay, so that's our time function, and I think with that we will go ahead and conclude this video. Um,